Hey everyone, in this video I'll show you how I painted my grim dark Primaris chaplain for my Ultramarines army. As you can see here, this guy looks like he has been in the fight for a while. There's plenty of battle damage, dust and blood all over his armor. Looking at him like this, you might think his armor is painted black, but that's not the case. I'll show you how to get a black looking armor without losing all the shading and highlighting. To start with, I primed the model black, but then I quickly apply a layer of ashen grey all over the armor of this chaplain. This is a dark grey that is perfect as a base for black armor because it still gives you the opportunity to shade the recesses even darker. Then I dry brush quite liberally with Stormfang all over the model. Stormfang is a desaturated blue that will give the whole model a bit of a blue tint. Right now it might look way too bright and too blue, but don't worry, it will all come together later on. After dry brushing with Stormfang, I dry brush a bit lighter over that with grey sear. This is a light grey color that is perfect for the brightest highlights on this armor. Just don't apply too much of it. It's really only for the brightest highlights and it shouldn't cover over all the Stormfang. Now that's done, I wash all the armor with Drakenhof Nightshade. This is a dark blue shade and it will darken the whole armor and make the highlights a lot less bright. It'll still clearly look like blue armor rather than black, but we're not done with it yet. But it's first time to block in the other colors on the model. I'm starting with his left shoulder pad. Since he's going to be part of my Ultramarines, I'm painting it in the same way as I do the other models. So first I dry brush on a bit of Stegadon Scale Green. Then a quick second layer of Thunderhawk Blue dry brushed on top of that. This will get a highlight later, but the paint needs to dry, so I'm continuing with some other details first. I'm using Corn Red for the handle of his crochets. This is a good way to tie him in with my other models that often have red on their weapons as well. I also do all the purity seals with this dark red. Then I apply Rockart Flesh to the cloth, the scripts of parchment of the purity seals and the skin on his face. Now these won't all look the same in the final result, we're going to shade them differently. But using the same base color for all of them is a good way to get different tones on different pieces of the model that work well together. And at the same time you can save time by only using one paint. Rockart Flesh doesn't cover well, so make sure you apply two thin coats with this. Then it's time for the gold trim on his armor and the weapons. I'm using Rune Lord Brass for this, so it looks more like an old gold than a shiny bright new trim. I'm painting all the trim, the skull on his knee, the croziers, the aquila and also the gun in this gold color. Now the left shoulder pad had time to dry, I can give it the final highlight with Teclis Blue. This is a very bright blue color that's perfect for the highlight and it will be darkened down later anyway to blend it with the other blue layers underneath it. I initially wasn't sure yet what color I would paint this chain but now that he has all the gold details I figured a bit of corn red here would do nice. So I took out my small detail brush and painted this red. Then it's time for some lead belcher for the metal details. I'm painting his gun, the vents and stabilizers on his backpack and the metal plate in his head in this dull metal color. Now I'm painting his belt in Rhinox Hide, a dark reddish brown, but after I'm done with this, I'll look at the model and realize it's just too dark. This happens often when I'm trying out a new paint scheme. You try to go too grim dark and sometimes you just go too far and the model ends up looking like a black and brown blob. So after I finished with the Rhinox hide, I went right over it with a layer of Mornfang brown, which is a much lighter brown. And now the belt actually stood out against the black armor. To add a bit more color variation, I wanted to paint the skulls in an actual bone color and not have them gilded like the rest of the armor. So I painted the skull that's on his backpack, but also the skulls on the croziers in Screaming Skull. This paint doesn't cover well, so use two layers of this. Now we're almost done with blocking in all the details. I'm just going to paint the joints in his armor with Abaddon Black. This is to make them look like a different texture than the ceramide plating. 
I applied a few decals in the meantime. One on his shoulder, one on his right knee and a little text on his left leg. So now it's time for the writing on the parchment of the purity seals. I'm first using ashen grey and corn red to draw a few symbols on the strips of paper. Uh, just make lines, vertical, or horizontal, a little triangle, maybe a cross, things like that that are easy to draw with just straight lines. And then I fill it all in with scribblings in ashen grey. I have a video on my channel where I go into more detail on painting purity seals, but for now I would just say don't use pure black to write the texts. Instead use a dark grey or brown and turn the model in such a way that you're painting vertical lines rather than horizontal lines. This will give you a decent effect really quickly that will just look great on the tabletop. And then it's time to apply the second wash to the model. I'm starting with Seraphim sepia first, which I'll apply to the bones and the parchment on the model. So this includes the purity seals and the pages in the book that he's carrying on his back. Then I wash the cloth and his skin with Agrax Earthshade. This will make the cloth look a lot dirtier and it brings out the lines in his face. Then I wash all the rest of the model in non-oil. The armor and all the gold trim, the leather belt, the purity seals and the handle on his crozier's and gun, it all gets this non-oil. Then I figured I would do some basing while I wait for the washes to fully dry. I'm going for Armageddon dust. This is what I'm using for my whole ultramarine army. And I think it contrasts nicely with the blue and in this case the black of the model. I then use Zandri dust which is the same color as Armageddon dust, but just without a texture in it. And with this paint, I'm dry brushing some dust on the feet and lower legs of the model. This is to simulate him walking through this dusty environment for some time already. I thought the metal plate on his head was disappearing a bit too much, so I wanted to make it a lot brighter. I used Stormhost Silver for this, which is a super bright and shiny metal color. I also painted his teeth with grey sear and his tongue with corn red, but I don't have footage of that, or I do, but it was such a detailed work that I had to hold the mini in a particular way and I was blocking the camera. I'm sorry about that. I also applied a highlight of rock art flesh to the skin in his face, by the way. Now it's time for some battle damage. Since this is a character, I wanted to do a bit more than what I do for my troops. So I start with dabbing on some abaddon black on the edges of the armor where I would expect him to scrape it along rocks or where it would get knocks due to use. Using black is a nice way to simulate the paint chipping off and showing the base primer but not having it chipped off so much that it shows the steel underneath. So now to add some additional wear and tear I'm using lead belcher and I dab that on in the same spots where I already dabbed on some abaddon black. This will give the impression that there are some deeper scratches on the armor that expose the underlying steel. Just be gentle with both the black and the lead belcher. Slowly build it up and don't apply too much at the same time. Since I have my lead belcher open, I use it to paint the metal studs in the head of the chaplain and the skull on his backpack. With all that done, it's time for the final weathering stage. I washed the whole model in AK Interactive's Streaking Grime. This is a greenish brown enamel wash that leaves a very dusty effect when it dries up. I just liberally apply it all over the model. Once that's on the model, I go over the raised parts everywhere with some white spirits to wash off the streaking grime. This will push the wash more into the recesses and it gives a perfect dusty and weathered look for the whole model. And then it's finally time for some blood. My space marines have been in the fight for a while, so naturally they have some blood spatters on their armor and weapons. I start with a bit of corn red. Just dab that on and dry brush it a little in the places where you would expect blood to land when he swings that crozier around. Then I go over the same spots again, but with blood for the blood god. This works the same as the battle damage I've done before. Just don't overdo it and build it up slowly so that you can get the effect you're looking for. And then it's time for the rest of the base of this model. I'm using Geek Gaming Scenic's ready basing material for this. I just glue on a tuft of heather first. They, they come with a sticky base, but I just put a drop of super glue on it just to be sure. 
And then I put PVA glue in the spots where I want the basing material to stick. Just spread it out with a wet brush and don't use your favorite paintbrush for this because it will be ruined after you use it for glue a couple of times. Then I pick some stones out of the basing material and drop them on the glue and then you just drag the base through the material and it will stick to the PVA glue. Tap off the excess and you're done with the base. And here is the finished chaplain in all his glory. Do you remember how blue the armor looked before all the washes and how it now looks like it's black? That's how you can paint black armor that still looks interesting and has some shading on it. I think this guy looks ready for the tabletop like this and he's ready to recite his litanies in support of my ultramarines. Now don't forget to like and subscribe and check descriptions for the links to my Instagram, my site and Patreon if you want to support me. Thanks for watching, see you next time.